Okay, so today we're going to be talking about something called neuroblastoma. Okay, so this is a type of tumor, and I'm going to be writing this down, but these are most common in, um, usually in infants, usually people under five years old will get neuroblastoma. So what is a neuroblastoma? Well, first, let's talk about neuroblast. So a neuroblastoma, really quick, is going to be a tumor of the neuroblast. Neuroblasts are basically immature cells, okay, so they're immature cells that go on to become nerve cells. Okay, and so these are going to be in, in the fetus. So as the fetus is developing, when you're developing, the neuroblast started making um, nerve cells. So the neuroblasts are immature cells that go on to become nerve cells by the time you're born. So what happens in a neuroblastoma time you are born? So what happens in a neuroblastoma is I have these neuroblasts that should become nerves. Okay, I'm going to talk more about these in just a minute. But what happens in neuroblastoma is instead of the neuroblasts becoming nerves, they just remain as neuroblasts and just keep multiplying and multiplying and never differentiate into nerve cells. Okay, so let's talk about this real quick. And here's what happens is, as we mentioned in the med uh, medulloblastoma video, usually what happens is you have a sperm and it meets an egg and then they go on and they just start multiplying and multiplying and they start to form a person. And these are basically undifferentiated nerve cells. Well, you have cells on the outside of this that make up a tissue called the ectoderm. Okay? From the ectoderm, right, that's just, and again, that's just the outer side of the developing fetus at this point. From the ectoderm, you are going to get some cells called neural crest cells. What the neural crest cells will do at about the fifth week of development, so the fetus is about uh, in its fifth week of development, is these cells will now come over to where the spinal cord is going to be. Okay, so these cells come over to here. There's my neural crest cells over to here. And they start migrating down next to the spinal cord. And as they migrate down, what they will do is they will differentiate or they will become part of the sympathetic chain. Okay, so here's my sympathetic chain. And this is going to be in the thoracic spine. Okay, and if you don't remember what, this, what the sympathetic nervous system was for, is the sympathetic nervous system is responsible for your fight or flight response. So when you're nervous or something scary is happening, you don't know how you're going to react, it's the sympathetic nervous system that's going to make you decide whether you want to stay and fight or if you're going to leave. So this is in the thoracic spine here. It becomes the sympathetic These same cells, when they get down to the lumbar spine, are going to differentiate, or they are going to go on and become the adrenal glands. And I think everybody has heard of adrenal glands, because adrenal glands get your adrenaline going. Okay, and your adrenal glands actually sit on top of the kidney. Okay, so here's my adrenal glands right here. So once again, what's going to happen here is instead of these cells going on to become the sympathetic chain or the adrenal glands, they're just going to continue to multiply as neural crest um, cells. Okay, so instead, they just continue to multiply as neural crest. Normally, it's the ones that, it's the cells that are supposed to become the adrenal gland that are going to be the ones that don't differentiate into the adrenal gland. So in other words, these will migrate down, but what will happen is they don't become the adrenal gland, they just start to grow into a tumor. 
Okay? So the thing about these is, um, hey, let me write that real quick. So usually occur around the adrenal gland. It's not uncommon for people who have around the adrenal gland. Okay, so again, these cells should have gone on to make the adrenal gland, but instead they just grew into a tumor. It's not uncommon for these people to have like a feeling of fullness in the stomach. Um, it can also occur anywhere in here. So depending on where it occurs in here, it can cause other symptoms. It can actually cause fracture in the back of the skull, and then it causes blood to leak, and then it can cause raccoon eyes. If it's happening in the thoracic spine, it can put pressure on the lungs and cause things such as difficulty breathing. But anyways, so um, there it is right there. So we get the tumor growing, right? Survival rates. Most of the time, this is going to happen in people who are less than five years old. It's going to be diagnosed by the time they're five years old. Okay. If it's diagnosed by the time they're five years old, they can do surgery, and there's about a 95% chance that the person is going to survive. This is much more rare after five years old to be found, but if the person is greater than five years old, then there's only about a 68% chance of survival. Okay, so that's basically a quick rundown on uh, neuroblastomas, and I hope you enjoyed the video.